Welcome back to All Things Lord of the Rings with your host Alex, also known as Solanus Dracone. So, when last we left off, Fenrod Felagun died, saving Baron from being eaten by a werewolf, but being mortally wounded in the process. Obviously, Baron was pretty bummed out about the loss of his truest friend that he had known since he left Orthonion, but as you'll recall, Luthien made a friend too, the greatest doggo ever, Huon and they had ridden hard since they left Nargothrond. Not long after Finrod left for the afterlife, Luthien showed up and she was ready to get down to business. The first thing she did was to get right up on the bridge that led to the island Sauron's dungeon was on, and she began to sing one of those powerful magic songs. This song passed right through the stone and the walls, and Baran heard it. He thought he must be dreaming, because he could see the stars shining above him and hear nightingales singing in the trees. So he sang back for no other reason than it seemed appropriate, before promptly passing out. Luthien heard his song, however, and that's when she really cranked up those pipes of hers. She sang with even more power, making all the werewolves howl and the island tremble. Sauron heard her and thought to himself, well, wouldn't that be a pretty little prize to bring back to the boss? So, thinking it would be just that easy, he sent out a werewolf to snag her on the bridge. Huon straight up ninja murdered the bastard. Sauron sent another, and another, and still another, and so on, all of them falling one by one to Huon's jaws. Finally, Sauron sent out the biggest, baddest-ass wolf he had, Draugluin, the granddaddy of all werewolves. Huan had a bit more of a challenge with that one, but in the end, Draugluin was sent scurrying back with his tail between his legs, telling Sauron that Huan was there before dying of his wounds. Now, the whole thing about Huan's fate being that he would only die after meeting the biggest, nastiest werewolf that ever lived was pretty common knowledge. Sauron definitely knew it himself, and here he was, looking at the biggest, nastiest werewolf he had dead at his feet. Logically, the only thing to do was to become a werewolf himself. This he did, and by Eru was he a hideous one. Shrouded in an aura of dread that could only come from a being as powerful as Amaya, even Huan's gut reaction was to jump the hell out of the way. Even Luthien, as powerful a child of an elven lord and Amaya spirit as she was, couldn't take that full on in the face. As she started to fall onto her ass, she threw her magic cloak over Wolf Sauron's eyes, and that rightly bamboozled him. Having regained his wits, Huan jumped on Worst Doggo, and they fought like only two ferocious dogs can fight. Only multiply that by a thousand. People miles away heard it and shit themselves. But there was no defeating Best Doggo, and Sauron tried to escape by first turning into a giant snack, and then back to his normal shape. No getting out, Huan had him by the throat. Before Sauron's earthly body could give up the literal ghost, Luthien rolled up on him and was like, you got two choices, either I'm going to strip your spirit from your flesh and send you crying back to your pimp, or you're giving me this tower and fucking off. Now, Sauron was crafty, Sauron was powerful, Sauron was even mighty, but Sauron was a bitch. He gave up, turned into a bat, a giant nasty bat of course, and flapped his miserable ass out of there dripping his blood everywhere. A quick aside, folks, the book says he turned into a vampire, but back in those days I don't think it meant the same thing we think it means today. I've read enough sources to firmly believe that Tolkien meant a vampire bat, and I'm going to refer to vampires as bats whenever they come up in the book. Anyhow, after kicking Sauron's sorry ass and sending him packing, she decided it was time to find Baron. So she did a little powerful thing, which basically destroyed many Dark Lord's dungeon fortress, and all the slaves and captives came out, not even believing their luck in what had happened. But no Baron. She found him in his spot in the dungeon next to Finrod's body, all passed out, and she thought he was dead. Throwing her arms around him, Romeo and Juliet style, they stopped just short of drinking the poison, and he woke up and they were happy. Burying Finrod's body back in OG Minith's Tirith, they went forth. Now, this would be a short-ass episode if I stopped there, even though it seems tailor-made as a good pausing point. 
I'm going to continue, because darned if I'm going to short anyone on quality time. Baron and Luthien took a little bit of time, walking in the forest and such for a few months, to recharge themselves and their love. Huan went back to Kelagorm in Nargothrond, being a good faithful doggo, but that relationship was a little strained from then on. There was a strain of other forms going on in Nargothrond as well, with the captives that were just released from Sauron's dungeon coming back home. And they came back with stories they did. Stories like, Our King is Dead, and Look How This One Chick Just Did What None of the Sons of Fionor Would Dare to Do, and Hey, Maybe the Sons of Fionor Are in League with Sauron, and so on. So the whole land decided they had had enough of Kelegorm and Kurofin calling the shots around here, and Orodreth got back his control over the people. Orodreth was obviously not happy with the Sons of Fionor, but he wouldn't allow them to be killed, because that would just cause more Doom of Mandos-style trouble for his people. He did, however, basically kick their asses out of town, swearing that there will be little love between Nargothrond and the Seven Brothers from here on out. Kelegorm was all fine then, and with a nasty look from him, and a snarky smile from Kurifin, they fucked off to try and find their brothers. Nobody went with them, not even those of their own people who had come with them into Nargothrond in the first place. Even Kurifin's son, Celebrimbor, whose name will be very important to remember when we get to the Second Age, renounced the deeds of his father and stayed in Nargothrond. Best doggo, however, faithful as ever, kept on following Kelegorm. So, to recap, Luthien bitch slapped Sauron, Huon kicked major ass helping her out, the two lovers got back together, and the sons of Fionor were bamboozled again. What happens next? That's for the next episode. Thank you all for watching. Once again, I am Alex, also known as Solanus Dracone, and this has been All Things Lord of the Rings. Goodbye.